hauled up into the sky at the end of a rope, a car trapped on a collapsing bridge, an airplane crashing head-on into the world's tallest building, the danger zone of the freak accident. You're about to see some of the most amazing footage ever captured on film. May 11, 1932. The place was Camp Kearney, California. The giant Navy dirigible Akron was easing down to its mooring when it happened. Suddenly, three of the landing crew were yanked into the air. A gust of wind had carried the huge airship aloft with its unexpected passengers. Horror swept the men on the ground as one of the victims lost his hold. Then a second man dropped. Miraculously, the third sailor, Bud Coward, hung on for almost two hours, 2,000 feet above the ground, until he could be pulled up into the Akron and safety. A fantastic ordeal. Just off the coast of England back in 1955, a routine helicopter rescue demonstration was in progress. The volunteer survivor afloat in his rubber raft was pulled up into the air by the copter as per schedule. No one had bargained for what happened next. Fortunately, both men came out unscathed. And who can tell which way a chimney will fall? The workmen demolishing this 220-foot smokestack thought they knew. But right now, your ventilation take place before your very eyes. There were no smashed bodies, but the surrounding buildings took quite a beating. In 1947, this freak accident took place during the spring thaws in Warsaw, Poland. Ice-choked rivers threatened to flood the countryside as the ice began to break up in huge chunks. They attacked the foundations of this wooden bridge. And as the horrified onlookers watched, the bridge splintered like so much matchwood. Watch that automobile, trapped on the bridge, go streaking down into the water. Death and destruction in full view of a motion picture camera. Now, probably the most famous bridge collapse of all time. In July of 1940, a brand new bridge spanning Puget Sound, joining Olympic Peninsula with the Washington State mainland, was officially dedicated and open for use. But from the very beginning, its actions were more than peculiar. The bridge actually swayed and undulated like a huge snake. So much so, the locals called it Galloping Gertie. At 11.08 a.m. on the morning of November 7, 1940, a professor of engineering happened to be on hand to film the behavior of the bridge in the hope of determining what structural fault might be causing its wild and woolly movements. These are the startling films that he was fortunate to shoot. gave way with a roar. Its midsection tumbled into the sound 190 feet below. There was absolutely no way of knowing the freaky set of circumstances that were about to link the tallest structure in the world, the Empire State Building, with a B-25 bomber knifing through the fog on its way to New York City. It was July 28, 1945, at 9.45 in the morning. Suddenly, the people in the busy streets below frantically ran for cover. Flaming gasoline-soaked wreckage showered down upon them from above. The Army bomber carrying its pilot and two passengers had crashed into the giant building between the 78th and 79th floors. Fortunately, the collision had taken place on Saturday when only about one-tenth of the skyscraper's occupants were present. Still, the results were tragic enough. 
All three of the bomber personnel were killed, along with 10 victims accounted for in the building. 26 others were seriously injured, and hundreds of people in the immediate vicinity received the fright of their lives, not to mention assorted minor injuries. This is what a seafaring man generally calls a spot of weather. When it occurs, any ocean-going vessels in the vicinity of rocky coastlines like this are in for trouble. The sea becomes a roaring monster that is earnestly intent on destroying anything that is foolish enough to be trespassing on its waters. The lives of human beings hang delicately in the balance. A freighter has been forced to give up the ghost a mile or two away, and the French Coast Guard has the dangerous task of plowing through impossibly rough oceans to get to the scene before it's too late. Most sea rescue operations have to be performed under such perilous conditions. But the men on board vessels like this know their business. They've learned how to battle the wind and mountainous waves on better than even terms. They have to. Their own lives depend on it. Not to mention the lives of the passengers on the stricken ship. This was the Flying Enterprise, an American freighter after winds of hurricane force had sprung out from nowhere. The ship had taken a terrible pounding from the angry water until finally she had cracked under the strain. Water rushing into the hole tipped her over in a 60 degree lift. Her captain, Kurt Carlson, gave the order to abandon ship to the crew of 40 and 10 additional passengers. He staunchly refused to leave his vessel, feeling sure that he could keep her afloat until the flying enterprise could be towed to England. For 13 days, he stayed with it, fighting the inevitable. But it was a lost cause. 41 miles off Falmouth, England, the tow cable broke, and the ship floundered over into an 80-degree list. Carlson and the mate, Kenneth Dancy, were forced to leap overboard to save their lives. The flying Enterprise dipped below the waves and was lost in some 40 fathoms of water. But the classic shipwreck of all times concerned the ill-fated luxury liner, the Titanic. Built as a ship that even God couldn't sink, she left Southampton, England, on April 10, 1912. On board were some 2,200 passengers and crew. It was her maiden voyage to America, and more plush accommodations could hardly be found at the time. But the supposedly unsinkable vessel struck an iceberg shortly after the passengers had dined on the delicious cuisine, as illustrated by this copy of her last official menu. 1,502 lives were lost in this tragedy that followed. 